somebody just is tuning in and says, who's Ryan Leaf? How would you sum up the last 10 years? Uh, yeah, so, so 2006, well, no, probably the last 15 years. Uh, it, it was a struggle because I didn't know who I was. I didn't have an identity. I was this um, failed bust football player. And so then I thought I would go coach football because those who can't do teach. And I had never dealt with all the all that came with transitioning out of the league you wanted to be in since you were four years old. Um, and meeting the other players who had transitioned out and struggled with it, regardless if they were in the league for 20 years or two years, they all struggled with it. I just did it on a very public public uh, um, way. Um, so, so you it, went to a, a college and started coaching quarterbacks? Yeah, started coaching quarterbacks on a volunteer basis. I think I was getting paid $500 a month because I also wasn't honest enough to tell people that, hey, I was running out of money, and but I wanted to show that everything was fine still. Um, and just being vulnerable and honest, uh, I couldn't do that. So still I struggled. Lying, still lying to yourself. Still lying and yeah. just... And, um, struggling to get by. I mean, five hundred dollars a month. I don't. I don't know how I would. I did it actually. But how do you get to prescription drugs? Well, I was introduced to them, of course, um, when I was playing professionally with all the orthopedic surgeries I had. So just paint Percocet, Oxycontin, uh, Vicodin, Vicodin, Vicodin. That was your. That it was. Yeah, it's the only drug I've ever taken. But it it's the one that brought me to the floor. I mean, a prescript a prescribed drug to me. Um, and it was the same as heroin for somebody else or crack for somebody else. It just, it was. It was my, it was what did it for me. And what what was the feeling like when you took Vicodin? I felt, I didn't feel any of the judgment, especially when I was in public places. If I went into a place where I, I always felt judged when I walked into a room because of that identity I thought it was. And that's a narcissistic way to think of things like everybody's talking about me or looking at me and, and no one could care. <laughs> and I just kind of go, oh, yeah. And I thought everybody's staring and. So that helped me not feel the judgment. It helped me not feel the pain uh, for being a bust or a failure or not meeting my expectations and the fans' expectations in San Diego, all of those things. It took away all that. And eventually, it became a necessity because I became addicted, and I had to take them to just feel normal. So that's what it ha- what happens. It, it medicates you for a time, and then you have to take it to just to get back to even. But how do you get to the point where you're breaking into somebody's house to steal I, I can't explain it other than the psychological effects of that drug. Um, and that's how you got caught? Yeah. And that's, I had gone, um, my brother, I had been arrested and I bonded out and I had gone uh, essentially to um, park in a garage and, and end it all. And something intervened with that, whatever it was, my family or or God and I just went to another home that I knew had pills and I just knocked on the door and it was unlocked and I walked in and I, I took them. How did they catch you? On the way out, they, the family pulled into the driveway oh. and I just, you know, I made up some story that I was there for, I was the wrong address or something and they knew something was up. But I mean, I can imagine I'm a large intimidating figure. So um, they probably didn't want to do too much there, and not that I that was in my mindset. I was more scared than anything at that moment. I just knew that I had the pills in my pocket. And I was like, please let me get out of here. Please let me get out of here so I can go and take them. That's the psychological effect. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. <laughs> 